Hello and welcome to College World. And so this is the first video of a series of, uh, of a series of videos in which we will be covering chapter number one of Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry. Uh, chapter number one, uh, the title of chapter number one is the particulate nature of matter. Uh, if you have watched the introductory video, uh, you will be aware that we will be uh, following uh, the new updated syllabus for 2016, 17, and 18 uh, posted by Cambridge. And I have provided uh, the URL uh, for you to freely access the uh, syllabus in the introductory video. So as you can see here, there is a total number of 10 objectives out of which four are supplement that we will be covering. Uh, some of which include stating the distinguishing properties of solids, liquids, and gases, describing the structure of solids, liquids, and gases in terms of particle separation, arrangement, and types of motion, and explaining changes of state in terms of um, the kinetic theory and much more. Okay, so um, first... Uh, let's start off uh, by explaining what is meant by matter. Matter is everything that has uh, mass and volume. Uh, mass is the amount of material, volume is the amount of space. So at this point, uh, you would ask, what is non-matter then? Non-matter is the energy such as light, sound, electricity, magnetism, and heat. I mean, you can define for sound or light, for instance, mass or volume. Okay, so let's get started with the objectives. Um, okay, let me just get the highlighter in case I just needed it and the yellow color. Yes, we're good to go. So uh, the first objective is core. Um, state the distinguishing properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Solid state, a substance. Um, I'm sorry about that. Okay, um, a substance in the solid state has a fixed volume, a definite shape, and incompressible. So these are the three distinguishing uh, features of a solid. Fixed volume, I, I said yellow, <laughs> definite shape, and incompressible. As for the liquid state, a substance in the liquid state has a fixed volume, indefinite shape, uh, takes the shape of the container, and it flows easily. So, for instance, if you have water, which is a liquid in a cup, and then uh, you put it in a bowl, so it takes the shape of the bowl uh, when, when it used to be um, taking the shape of the cup. So, I mean, this is all kind of like obvious information, but you just have to know the terminology to use when you're asked for the distinguishing properties, like use fixed volume, um, in uh, like... Um, indefinite shape, indefinite volume, you know, these kind of um, uh, terminology uh, you have to use. So the third thing is the gaseous state. A substance in the gaseous state has an indefinite volume, um, indefinite shape. So it's the complete opposite of the liquid and the solid. So it changes its shape and volume to fit the size and the volume of the container. So that was a pretty easy objective to cover. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, next objective. Okay, um, the second objective, which is also uh, core, uh, which is also core, okay, I'm sorry, um, let me take the, uh, the orange highlight this time. So, uh, describe the structure of solids, liquids, and gases in terms of particle separation, arrangement, and types of motion. So, here's a nice table in which uh, it will make it easier to remember, um, um, make it easier for you to distinguish between the uh, three different states, solids, liquids, and gases. So, when it comes to arrangement, you're going to describe it in two ways. The separation of the particles and the order in which the particles are um, place, the pattern of the particles. And I uh, will be discussing the movement of particles and attractive forces between the particles. So when it comes to solids, the particles are closely packed together. Uh, they have a regular pattern. The movement of the particles vibrate in place. The attractive forces between the particles is strong. Okay, uh, when it comes to liquids, uh, they're fairly apart uh, when it comes to the separation. And when it comes to the order, it's random. It's an irregular uh, pattern. When it comes to the movements, move freely, but slowly. It's really important, slowly. Sliding over each other. And the attractive forces between the particles are weak. 
When it comes to gases, they're far apart. So uh, notice that in the liquids, it's fairly apart. In the gas, it is far apart. And it is random. It's an irregular pattern. When it comes to the movement of the particles, um, they move freely and rapidly. So when it's uh, liquid, we set slowly. But when it comes to gases, it is rapidly. And when it comes to the attractive forces, there is no attractive forces between uh, the gas particles. Okay, so here's um, kind of like a diagram to show like a solid. I know it's not like the greatest drawing out there, but I just want to convey the idea that in the solid they're closely packed, the particles. For the liquid they are uh, fairly apart and for the gases they're far apart. Okay, so I guess that was also another easy objective to tackle. And now to the next objective. I'm sorry, uh, the keyboard keeps coming out. <laughs> okay, so uh, the third objective, which is also core, uh, which is also core, uh, is describe the changes of state in terms of melting, boiling, evaporation, freezing, condensation, and sublimation. So you need to really have a good understanding of all of these processes. And before understanding these processes, you have to understand that matter can change states by either heating or cooling. Uh, gray is really bad or black. <laughs> okay, so either by heating or by uh, cooling. So all of these processes, melting, boiling, evaporation, freezing, condensation, sublimation, they all include uh, some sort of heating or cooling. So here's uh, kind of a cool uh, triangle that you need to kind of like memorize or something. From a solid to a liquid, it is melting. From, um, just a second. Okay, so from uh, from a liquid to a solid, the other way around, it is freezing. From a liquid to a gas, it is vaporization. From a gas to a liquid, it is called condensation. From a gas to a solid, it is known as sublimation. From a solid to a gas, it is desublimation. So a lot of people really... Um, you know, get confused when it comes to sublimation. So we are going to discuss this in detail. Uh, so as I said, this is a really cool triangle for you to remember uh, how uh, uh, the states of matter uh, change from one to another. Okay, so what is meant by sublimation? It occurs uh, when the melting point and the boiling point of a substance are equal. So it has no liquid state. So before I get in, into the examples, let me explain what's that. What's melting point and what's boiling point? Melting point is temperature at which a solid starts changing to a liquid or a liquid starts changing to a solid. Boiling point, temperature at which a liquid boils and its vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so let's see. A solid, so to change from a solid to a liquid, uh, the temperature at which um, uh, a substance changes from a solid to a liquid is the melting point. Okay, and uh, for a substance to change from a uh, liquid state, oops, what happened? Okay, 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 for a substance to change from a liquid state to a gas, uh, um, the temperature at which it changes from liquid to gas, I mean, is boiling point. Okay, so let's go back to the definition of sublimation. It occurs when the melting point and the boiling point of a substance are equal, so there is no liquid state in between. Okay, you have to bear that in mind. So let's see, from solid to gas directly, you don't want liquid or gas. So this would have to imply that the melting point is equal to the boiling point. It makes sense now, right? Okay, and let's go back to the examples. Um, examples of sublimation. Iodine, gray solid, when heated, it forms purple iodine gas. Number two, the dry ice solid, CO2, when heated, it forms carbon dioxide gas. Ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, uh, solid, when heated, it sublimes to gases, ammonia, and HCl. And so uh, these were um, the three examples of sublimation. Um, I think I'm going to end the video here. So we have covered in this video three objectives of chapter number one. Um... Uh, so, um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I'll try as much as possible to answer them. Or maybe other students that are watching the video as well uh, might help out. So, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next